Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Blow Daz. I'm Gaynor. Here we are, the two of us. If Patreon's your thing, check out the link in the description below. Absolutely loads of stuff on there. Uh, all starting at $3 a month. We've got full watch alongs, Modern Family, F is for Family, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, what's the long form one we're doing? The quarterback we've done. Yeah, Seinfeld. Now we're doing the receiver. Yeah, Seinfeld's on there. There's loads of quizzes. There's loads of stuff on there. Yeah. Uh, support the channel. Uh, yes. Check it out. Um, world's largest truck stop. Hmm. Big kitchens, food documentary. It's got to be in the USA, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of a truck stop. I can't think of anywhere else. We don't really do it in Europe, truck stops. I was going to say, we don't call them trucks either, really. Yeah, that's a point. Good point. Um, yeah, lorry. It's got to be in the Midwest, I'd say, as well. It's got to be like middle country. Yeah, for it to be so big. Yeah, yeah. it's got to have a lot of land. Yeah, let's see what it is anyway. World's largest truck stop, big kitchens, food documentary. Let's go. In Iowa, America's Iowa. biggest truck stop. We got 900 spaces out there, and they are all filling up. 900. Fights to keep up with the constant influx of hungry truckers. <laughs> it's good food. This Titanic truck stop dishes up 350,000 meals a year. That's a lot of meat. On one of the busiest days of the year. It's pretty crazy right now. We meet the faces. It's getting super busy out there. And the food. You can't. I wonder what the busiest day of the year is. I was just going to say that. I imagine you've got like, uh, you've got you've got to think of cargo crossing country. So you've got to think like big holidays, Halloween, yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, uh, New Year. I don't know, people... I would, have, I would have said just before Christmas. Yeah, I think toys moving around, yeah. stores and stuff, yeah. clothing. Now, do, I know they, they stop there to eat, but do they like sleep in the truck there as well? They probably have like, it's a truck stop, so they probably, uh, they probably have all the facilities like to sort like hook up. Yeah, they probably have showers. I mean, we went to... Um, Bucky's. Yeah, Bucky's. But they didn't have a, didn't have a showers. showers and everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I imagine a lot of these cater towards the uh, the, the, the long distance lorry driver, the no truck yeah, yeah. driver, because it's, you know, you're talking, you know, thousands of miles between coast to coast, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So they got, they need somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. Hell no, but it's good. <laughs> Behind one of the world's biggest kitchens. Interstate 80, nearly 3,000 miles of Trans-American Highway, home to the world's biggest truck stop, and the world's biggest truck stop restaurant, Iowa 80 Kitchen. It's marvelous. Truckers come from all over America for their favorite home-cooked meals 24-7. You always hear about Iowa 80. It's really legendary. Iowa 80 is the biggest truck stop on the planet, spread over half a square mile, with space for 900 trailers wow. and 250 cars. Welcome to the Iowa 80 kitchen. At its heart is the restaurant. It's Iowa 80's very own monster-sized food factory. I imagine this is just one uh, outlet, because I think I saw a Wendy's there when they panned out. Oh, really? So I imagine you've got other outlets yeah, that may be there as well that, that you, can, you can get from. It's just, this is probably just one of them. So just then they, they showed a kid in the car. Who would take the kid on a... Lots of truckers do. Really? Yeah. yeah it's a good adventure for kids. Just I said to truck. you. I said to you, next time you go to the USA, maybe if Sean can take me out for the day, and we'll film it, me and a truck with Sean. Yeah, I can understand yeah. adults, but... Yeah, like yeah a, kids a kid, like, yeah. A kid and a dog for yes. thousands of miles. Yeah, some people, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, I bet these, I bet these people who live that life... What, just travelling around, yeah. Because yeah. mm, it's, it's life on the road, isn't it? Yeah, got to state go to, to state, school, yeah. unless you're homeschooling. Homeschool. Mm -hmm. That's a school in itself, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Let's go. Iowa 80's kitchen sprawls over five and a half thousand square feet. It takes four convection ovens, two mixers, four steamers, six fryers, two flat grills, and a flame griller to keep this grub-making juggernaut running 24-7. This family-run business opened over 50 years ago when Grandpa Peel opened his truck stop diner here. When my grandfather started this restaurant, I don't think he could ever imagine that it would have gotten this big. Half a century later, the 300-seater restaurant feeds over 1,000 guests a day. That's wow. 18 million customers since its doors first opened. See, when this, and when Iowa yes. 80 is more than just All a truck right. stop. You can't get it here, you can't get it. As well as the restaurant, <laughs> it has a barber, a dentist, cinema, half mile long chrome store, even its own chapel. There's always something to do here. 
The Iowa 80 truck stop is so legendary, its loyal trucker customers have been coming back for decades. It's a village, isn't it? Yeah. I've been coming in here probably since the 60s or 70s. I came to Iowa 80 with my father, you know, when I was younger. I used to come here back in the late 80s. 9 a.m. Outside, the 900 parking bays are filling up fast. Everyone's lured by the famous food at Iowa's legendary rest stop. Food's great, man. You don't want to tell a hungry truck driver his breakfast isn't ready. General Manager Rick has served over 20 years in this epic interstate eatery. Today is the first and busiest day of the new trucking season, after the deadly winter roads have thawed. I'm going to cover about 650 miles today. I'm traveling to Nebraska. Red Eye Master Rick's on the early bird shift, feeding the first wave of starving drivers. I started at 4 o'clock this morning. And this is about midway, so you're going to give me a nice good breakfast. It's breakfast like the gasoline that keeps you going throughout the day. The first rule of Freight Club is start each day on a full tank. And the same goes for the drivers who come from far and wide for Iowa 80's trademark mega breakfast, the Hungry Man. I came up with the Hungry Man breakfast about eight years ago. Definitely the breakfast of breakfast. Hungry Man breakfast is my favorite. And who wouldn't love two large eggs, bacon, hash browns, sausages, and sausage patties, plus two flippin' huge pancakes? This is a supersized breakfast for super hungry truckers. Making breakfast here consumes a lot of eggs, 700,000 a year, wow. enough to make an omelet the size of a baseball field, twice over. To prepare the pancake batter, we're gonna start off with the eggs. Wouldn't like to be the one who cleans the toilets and oh, <laughs> bathrooms, no, right? All, all that gourmet <laughs> coffee as well. <laughs> Rick beats 24 extra large eggs at a time. We're gonna have enough pancake batter for about 50 pancakes. Next, it's in with some milk. This is making me hungry. And flour. Then, it's griddle time. The Hungry Man is a short order meal. As soon as a check comes in, Rick must whip it up in under five minutes. Now we're those mash browns on. Next goes the sausage links. And two slices of bacon for each breakfast. The sausage patties. Big truckers need big eggs. I'm guessing they're pre-cooked. The sausage. Them sausages all look pre-cooked, didn't they? Looks like we're just warming them through there. You think so? Yeah, yeah. It'd be pink otherwise, wouldn't they? Yeah, I guess so. Here we have the Hungry Man breakfast. It's beans. The Good Hungry Man beans. breakfast is America's number one morning meat injection to fill those empty human fuel tanks. Each year, Iowa 80 serves 36 and a half thousand Hungry Man breakfasts. Wow. That's 36 and a half thousand less hungry men and women, at least until lunchtime. It's got good crispy bacon, eggs, pancakes. It's all very good. It gives you the protein, everything you need. It's not very healthy, though, is it? No, no one's truckers are asked about that. Sat on their ass all day, yeah, <laughs> driving around. I, I know, but what, they should offer something like um, fruit some, salad. No, yeah. some um, avocado. <laughs> yeah, okay, and, and they still have it at the end of the year. 10 a.m. The morning rush is going full throttle. Did you get the patties on that hungry man? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy right now. Rick's crew must pump out a plate a minute to keep the truckers fueled up to the max. Got it. This is the busiest morning we've had so far this year. The next wave of starving drivers is about to come crashing in, but breakfast has hit the stock room hard. It's getting dangerous. We're getting real low on eggs. Since the kitchen cracks through over 1,200 eggs a day, it's up to Iowa 80's Mr. Fix-It, Jake, to find emergency supplies. It's definitely my neck on the line when it comes to supplies. If you run out, it's going to be my fault. America's biggest truck stop restaurant, Iowa 80 Kitchen, is smack dab in the busiest day of the spring trucking season. Oh, attention, service and guests, our breakfast buffet will be closing in 15 minutes. Thank you. 11 a.m., ravenous truckers have smashed through 400 breakfasts, and now the morning menu switches to lunch. Oh, I was going to say, it's like 24 hours. The heat is also yeah. on for Jake Harbeck, the kitchen's supply manager and Mr. Fix-It. 
He's arrived at the suppliers 18 miles away to get enough eggs to last the kitchen until tomorrow. I need to make sure that we have those extra 500 eggs we need to pick up today. Hey, Brian, you get those extra 500 eggs we needed? Yes, sir, they're all there. All right, here, let me get... Must be a better nickname than Mr. Fix-It. Yeah, when I know. You go to get eggs, yeah. right? <laughs> what was his name? Jake. Jake. Chicken Jake or something like that. Yeah. I don't know, you got to think of a different name than Mr. Fix-It. Yeah. What are you here with that? Jake and eggs. Sure, yeah. there's a lot of eggs in here. I hope I got these eggs in time before we run out. And they need all the eggs they can get to bind their most popular lunchtime meatloaf. dish. The meatloaf is amazing. Iowa 80's protein-loaded meatloaf has been a trucker's delight for more than half a century. Don't like meatloaf. I don't either. It's too meaty. Mm. I, just can't, I can't just eat meat. No. Unless it's a steak. I struggle with just meat on its own. Meatballs. I no. Don't no. Succulent, steaming beef, still cooked like it was back in the good old days. For their meatloaf alone, Iowa 80 minces through enough ground cow to make 300,000 quarter pounders a year. You want meat? I'll give you meat. Chris Hahn is shift manager, and in true Iowa 80 family fashion, she also chips in in the kitchen. Making her grandpa's interstate famous meatloaf is her forte. We start with celery. Then it's in with Jake's eggs, diced tomatoes, and gallons of sauce. A big can of ketchup. It's all pretty much homemade then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of ketchup. Two cups of beef base, two cups of salsa, a whole bottle of Worcestershire. <laughs> What's your sister? What's your four sister onions and four tablespoons of pepper. Now to mix this all together, I'm gonna use this giant whip. You can't make a meatloaf without pounding some serious cow. Here I have 100 pounds of beef, and it may sound like a lot, but we'll use this much in a single day. Wow. We're gonna have to use this industrial-sized mixer, and for that, I'm gonna need this humongous paddle. Truckers like their meat. Chris mixes the beefy blend in the mega mixer before adding that special spicy sauce. Now we're gonna add four pounds of breadcrumbs to our mixture. I'm sure truckers are dreaming about this all the way down the interstate. Okay, there's so much meat in there, now I need someone to help me lift the bowl. That's <laughs> <laughs> mud, right? Yeah. Chris packs the raw meat tightly into trays and gives it a good smackdown. This is really therapeutic. So now it's ready for the oven. It takes two hours to make this tasty, beefy beast. And here we go, Iowa 80's famous meatloaf. Juicy, succulent beef with creamy mash and rich, home-style gravy. No wonder it flies out the kitchen like a Played out of hell. The restaurant serves 73,000 portions of meatloaf a year, enough to feed the real meatloaf forever. Gravy. I wonder if these people live in the area that just go there. Not oh, they will be. It. Yeah, yeah, they will be. Yeah. So it always it holds 200 odd cows. It said, didn't it? Yeah. So it's uh, I imagine these people definitely in the area that sort of like go by there. Mm. My favorite beverage. I've been dreaming about this meatloaf since Pennsylvania. <laughs> I gotta hand it to Iowa, they sure know how to treat their beef. The meatloaf is going down well with these guys, but there are still hundreds of hungry truckers left to go. The lunchtime rush is full on. Oh, God, you gotta check out the buffet. Ribs, chicken. And for the kitchen crew, this means keeping the jumbo buffet constantly topped up. A lip-smacking smorgasbord, 50 gut-busting feet long. The biggest salad bar in the state. It's getting super busy out there. There we go, salad bar, okay? Yeah. It's almost dinner time, bar. the biggest meal of the day, and the kitchen is about to go into overdrive. We got 900 spaces out there, and they are all filling up. But there's a problem. One of the kitchen's key cookers has gone down. This is one of the worst things that can happen to a restaurant. If he doesn't get it fixed soon, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. 
on Interstate 80 in Iowa. On the busiest day of the new trucking season, the world's biggest truck stop is buzzing with ravenous customers. We're getting slammed now. 6 p.m., the giant diner is rapidly filling up for dinner. If you can't stand the heat, don't come in the kitchen. But at their busiest time, the kitchen is in crisis. Our pilot light went out in our fryer. We won't be able to get our food out to our customers. And the orders just keep on coming. I better get going. It's really piling up out there. Mr. Fix-It Jake has just 10 minutes to get it running, or hundreds of truckers will go hungry. This can be very difficult and dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. There's a lot of people out there waiting for their food. I hope Jake can get that pilot light lit real soon. I think we got this one going. Just got to wait a couple seconds. All right, I think we got it fixed now. The mega kitchen machine is back to firing on all cylinders. There's always pressure, but I have a good team, and we can always deal with pressure. Pressure only makes us work better. They need their monster grill to cook the kitchen's best-selling dinner order to piggy perfection. Pork chops. Sizzling, three quarters of an inch thick char-broiled pork chops, served with a steaming baked potato and fresh off the farm veg. Iowa 80 Kitchen cuts through 125 tons of pig a year, the same weight as three fully loaded semis. It's gonna get messy in here. Veteran chef Bobby Mayfield is a past master with a meat cleaver. Tenderize it, slice it, cut it, pound it. No one beats their meat and chops their chops <laughs> quite like Butcher Bob. <laughs> now it's time to get busy. Bobby hacks his way through 100 tons of beef, 150 tons of chicken, and 125 tons of pork a year. That's a lot of meat. I love my job. This is the most dangerous job in the kitchen, and only Bobby's cut out to do it. You gotta be very careful with this. And they don't call him Bobby the Butcher. Yeah. <laughs> Missing out here. Eh? These industrial saws are so sharp, they cut through bone like butter. A bad day in the office means it's hand sandwiches for lunch. One little mishap, you could lose a finger. To keep the meat cold, he must work at a teeth-chattering 35 degrees. I can show you how cold it is in this meat room. So it's not just the saw that's a threat to his fingers. Frostbite is too. Most people can cut meat for about five to 10 minutes. I can do it for about a half hour. I'm used to it. I am a bigger guy, too. A little more meat only. To keep up with demand for pork chops, Bobby uses his super butcher skills to cut 30 at once. This is where it all starts, cutting our famous pork chop. This is a day's work right here, 120 pounds of meat. He cuts each chop three quarters of an inch thick. But Bobby's skills don't stop there. This is one of our number one sellers. Here, the fat and the bone just sizzling. This gives it a nice flavor. Cooking Iowa's signature pork chops to perfection is a fine art. Charred on the outside, moist in the middle. I've been cooking these chops for 35 years. And it's very important to pay attention. You're off 15, 20 seconds is critical. And there we go. Perfect pork chop from the Iowa 80 kitchen. Again, you put a lot of effort into it, don't yeah, they? It's they like all it's seem clean, to do it, they all seem to be happy as yeah. well. Yeah, I like this. Mm. A pound of pure porcine pleasure makes this dish the most popular meat to eat at the Iowa 80 truck stop. The kitchen serves up 36 and a half thousand of these fork-worthy pork chops every year. Stacked on top of each other, that's a pork chop skyscraper towering two Empire State Buildings tall. They have it just right here. I'd definitely come back and eat this again. They are good. They're a thicker cut pork chop than you normally get any place else. Another satisfied customer ready to hit the road. How many miles do you think you've logged in over the years? How many millions of miles? Yeah, probably probably eight or nine million, probably. <laughs> How many coffees is that? They have to count them by the gallons. <laughs> Iowa 80 fuels their truckers with 2 million cups of coffee a year to keep... I just realised what they said, 365,000 a year for them. That's 100 a day, isn't it? For the pork chops? Yeah. yeah. That's 100 every day of pork chops. Yeah. I guess each serving's two. Well, it seats 300. Mm. So... 
Yeah, it seems uh, it seems a lot of that, doesn't yeah. it? Considering you've got cheeseburgers on there as well. Yeah. And then you've got your breakfast. You're not having your pork chop for breakfast. That's only one dinner sitting. Yeah. Quite a lot, that. Keep them awake. And with dinner only just warming up, the kitchen is about to reach boiling point. This is our busiest time of the day. Lunch is busy, you know, and dinner is even busier. I think this might be one of the busiest days that I've worked this year. The Iowa 80s kitchen has been powering out plates of home-cooked food from dawn to dusk. Meal after heartwarming, gut-busting meal, keeping America's truckers fueled up on the busiest day of the new season. 8 p.m., night is closing in and new trucks are arriving at the rate of three every minute. We're rolling now. Thank you, boys. Business at the buffet is booming. Staff are in a feeding frenzy, and everyone's after a slice of Iowa 80's signature dessert. It's like grandma and my great aunt used to make. The home-cooked apple dumpling with sweet cinnamon syrup and farm fresh cream. Kitchen crew here pound 30,000 apples a year, making this all-American classic. Enough apples a day to keep the doctor away for almost a century. Mr. Fix-It Jake is also baking mad, turning out hundreds of the truck stop's trademark apple dumpling at a time. We're gonna start with two pounds of flour, a pound and a half of baking shortening or lard, about a tablespoon of salt, cold water. Next up, those all-important apples. 20 pounds of them. For that authentic flavor, Jake coats the apples in pounds of sugar and cinnamon and leaves to infuse overnight. I do have a batch that's already ready. And now's the part where we have this a lot of fun because we're going to make a mess. Jake uses a whole load of flour power to stop his dumpling dough from sticking. Rolls it out. This is one of the original recipes that came with the restaurant. He uses coffee cans to cut the dough into circles. <laughs> it's the right size that we want. You don't want somebody to be jealous that somebody else's dumpling looks better than theirs does. Now comes the, the fun part where we get to fill it up. Jake makes a pastry pocket and stuffs his dumplings just like Grandpa did. This is where the magic happens. He see <laughs> the guy was fixing the uh, pilot light before. Hello. Going to get eggs. Uh. Delivery, now he's making the desserts. Kills the deal by making sure all those apples are tucked up tight. None of the juice is going to come out and go underneath. A final sprinkling of that sweet cinnamon fairy dust to give it a crisp caramel crust, and those big apple bad boys are good to bake. So now we're going to bake these in the oven at 325 for 45 minutes until they're golden brown. Now for the special ingredient, their signature apple syrup. And this is the one that people have come to love. And this is the one that we've been using on our dumplings now for 50 years. Jake mixes a gallon of apple juice with light corn syrup and butter. What I have here is cornstarch, half a cup of vanilla. We have a half a cup of lemon juice. We have a tablespoon of cinnamon. And we're going to add in a cup of apple juice. I wish you could smell this, because it smells nice. The syrups, what gives it that extra kick that our customers love? To finish, Jake lashes the dumplings with syrupy goodness. That crust is going to absorb all this good apple flavor. These sweet, sticky dough balls of deliciousness have been driving America's truck drivers wild for over 50 years. In total, they sell more than 10,000 portions of apple dumpling each year, enough to fill a bumper-sized dump truck. This apple dumpling good. You can't have none, but it's good. <laughs> I mean, we're talking good. Grandma style good. Iowa 80's Monster Kitchen has now been pumping out its famous dishes for almost 24 hours, an engine that never stops running. I'm very proud of what we've achieved here. We've given people a place to stop, an oasis on the interstate. As the dinnertime deluge becomes a trickle of midnight munchers, Rick's team can finally breathe a sigh of relief. It's starting to wind down now. We had a crazy day. I think we set a record, but we're, we're still going to be serving through the night, so the machine just keeps on rolling. I was going to say, you know, the, um, some of the restaurants I know, they close like two days a week and they have a deep clean on one of the days and yeah. things like that where they go in and they clean everything out. This is running 24-7. When are they getting that deep clean deep done? Clean, yeah. Yeah, because a few, few of the places there look like it needed a good scrub 
Yeah. But it's uh, but truckers are not going to go for. They're not looking no. for fine dining anyway. No. You know what I mean? But you've also got to stay healthy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're monitored and uh, regulated. Stomachache. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of them do. Yeah. <laughs> After eating all that, yeah. I mean, you got a choice. Yeah. But that's uh, yeah, mint place, right? Yeah. yeah good yeah. places like that. You think? You just imagine what goes into it. You know, every day people working there, every single day churning out non-stop. Yeah. yeah. Madness. Yeah. yeah. It's we like don't a have big anything. Community though, isn't it? Yeah, we don't have anything like that. We have the we have the services, but they're nothing like that. Well. How long services it, are busy. How long services it, are always busy over here. How long always. does it take to drive from one end of the country to the other? Yeah, well, you're in traffic. It's not. It's not a case of timing. So if it was empty roads, you'd probably do it in four hours. Just England for Newcastle to look to like no, maybe no more than that. I, just, well, I, I thought like it was Newcastle, about eight, New, eight like hours. Newcastle to Cornwall is probably about eight hours. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you see, or maybe six hours, something like that. But if you're going like Manchester to London. What people don't understand, you're in bumper to bumper. You got trucks either side of you yeah. for 200 miles yeah. on narrow, la- narrow roads. And if you go off road, like down country, lo- country roads, forget it. Yeah. It's like you you know, narrow lanes. You have to stop. <laughs> yeah, you get stuck behind. But you have to stop sometimes and go into like almost go into the bushes to let other cars pass. Yeah. Or they let you pass, and they have to go into the side. Yeah. Sort of thing. But it's, uh, yeah, it's totally different. You no, know, it's very different driving in the UK it's to where it is in the USA. Very strenuous. Over here, yeah. yeah, you've got to be focused all the yeah. time because it, mm. when you go down the motorway, like I always say, if you're if, you, if I hit the M6 today. Um, on a Saturday, um, and I know I'm going through, like, if I'm going to Manchester to Birmingham, it'll take me a good two and a half, three hours from Manchester to Birmingham, which is only about 70 odd mile. Yeah. Um, and I'll be jammed with, tr- with trucks, with cars, motorbikes, yeah. um, for, a, for a good 70 miles of that. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And right, I'm talking like this far away from the trucks. Yeah. They're on either side of you. Yeah. They don't try weaving in and out, try to get past them. Mm. They're allowed in the first two lanes, but not in the third lane. Yeah. But they, you know, it's uh, that third lane. You always get someone who thinks they're scared of passing the truck. Yeah. You know, because it's too narrow. Yeah. But it's uh, very, very different. But that's uh, I'm going to try and get out with Sean um, and go in his truck. Uh, yeah. He's a he's a he's a car delivery. He does all across country, doesn't he? And yeah. Canada. Yeah. Sort of thing. But he's a uh, you know he's a uh, I think he's I think he told me his truck was something like with the cab and all that something like might be a, what's it? I'm sure he said it was like hundred foot long. Really. It was massive. Well, yeah. he, he was going to move over here, wasn't he? And then when he saw the roads, he was like, not a chance. Yeah, I yeah, can't drive. He said he yeah. couldn't drive the same size. You can, I mean, trucks don't go everywhere over here. It's, no. it's like delivery to hubs and then it's little vans that deliver to like small yeah. little villages and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah but that's, uh, they're mega then. They're brilliant. Yeah. Impressive. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Cheers.